Swamp Kings, the Florida Netflix documentary about Urban Meyer 06 through 09, 010. 010 never made sense to me, but I say it anyway. It's on Netflix right now. I have gotten through episodes two and most of episode three, and I got some more takeaways. This video did pretty good for us the other night, so apparently you're interested in it. Motivating accomplished people is one of the hardest things to do in the world. There's no blueprint for it. No one's ever an expert on it, especially their first time around. And I always... I always love watching how cringeworthy it is when someone wins a national championship for the first time or a group of people do, and you think, man, we're about to do it again. We got Tim Tebow back. Now he's going to be the starter, and we got a better recruiting class coming in. I guarantee you, you go back to Preview Magazine Syndrome, or PMS, as we've trademarked it, to start the 07 season. I mean, can you imagine how simple it sounded? Well, they just won the title. The Tebow kid's back. They've got a better roster. So this team's going to be better than the one that just won the title. Except they weren't. Because there's more to the game of football and the game of life than that. And Urban Meyer is sitting there in this documentary saying, I became so mad with this team. Well, he was mad with himself. That's who he's mad with. Because he couldn't figure it out. You, you reach a point where you've got all the raw ingredients in the room. The stove won't turn on. Like, it's the thing you never thought would go wrong is what goes wrong. All of these talented people aren't performing at the same level they did last year. It's just, magically, they're only at an 8 instead of an 11. Well, how do, I, how do I change that? And the answer is, I don't know. If you're Urban Meyer in 2007, I don't know. Because I've never been in this situation. If you're Nick Saban, after you won one in 09, He should have had a better idea because he had done it before, but even then, that 2010 Alabama team lost three games. Check out Jimbo Fisher after he won the title at FSU. This stuff happens. Gene Chizik won a title in 2010, and the entire university imploded the next year. This stuff happens. And it's always remarkable when someone can figure out how to do it again. Urban Meyer, a year after that, in 08, figures out how to do it again. Oh, by the way, you'll love this. So, you know, when I was talking about Swamp Kings the other night, I went on about a a two and a half or a three minute rant about how I thought Tim Tebow's recruitment was the most important recruitment in the history of college football recruiting. I clipped that video where I said approximately nothing that hasn't been known for 15 years. I put it on Twitter. Some dude called spoiler alert on me. He called me a hack. And he said, some of you just can't stand but to ruin it for everyone else. And I'm like, buddy, did you not know Tim Tebow committed to Florida? Dude, wait till you hear about the tight end they had on that team. If you didn't know Tebow committed to Florida, if that's a spoiler alert for you. So anyway, sorry for anybody who did not know that Florida failed to win the title again in 07, but they don't. Canned Gatorade is all over this Netflix doc. I love the locker room scenes. I'm really surprised they have that deep a catalog of behind-the-scenes footage from those years because multimedia departments weren't as big in the late 2000s as they are now. They have an army now. But canned Gatorade, like Gatorade in glass is undefeated. Gatorade in a can is at least in sight of Gatorade in a glass. And they're down in that stuff like it's going out of style. Halftime, end of the third quarter, you got Florida Gators down in canned Gatorade. As, as far as I'm concerned, if we wanted to replace the stars on the American flag, you put a canned Gatorade on there, and I'm not going to vote for it over what we have now, but, man, it would be a good substitute. Canned Gatorade is great. Fruit Punch canned Gatorade is they should sell that stuff for like $25.99 a bottle at Publix in the wine section. That's where they should sell that at. So anyway, in 2007, uh, Auburn goes in there and beats Florida in the swamp, no less. And later in that year, I, I will never forget this. These games felt so big. It was like pay-per-view games. Actually, no, pay-per-view games actually had a place in the history of college football. They were terrible. But you, you get what I mean, like a prize fight. Florida goes to LSU in 2007. LSU is number one in the country at the time. Game day's there. Uh, Whatever we called the tour in 07 would have been there if I wasn't still a child, basically. And Urban Meyer was talking about how that's the loudest environment he's ever been in. Tiger Stadium, LSU, loudest environment he's ever been in. Loudest environment that I had been in for a long time until this Tennessee game last year against Alabama. And, And to be honest, 
you get at LSU at the right time, no one's going to match that. No one's going to match the decibel level. It's incredible. So you know what it made me do? It made me very nostalgic. I've talked to you guys about this before. High school audience will not be able to relate to this. I'm sorry, guys. You just missed it. I'm sorry. You got a lot of things going for you right now that prior generations didn't have. You got a lot of stuff working against you. You never got to grow up in an era where the cell phone was not the center of everyone's life. I'm sorry that you didn't get to experience it because it was wonderful. Now, you may be saying, what are you talking about? Cell phones were around in 2007. That's true. But the video picture quality on your standard iJosh in 2007 was not such that you even bothered recording stuff at games. And if you did, it was so unique. You had like, hey, my buddy shot footage at the game. Look at this. Because no one thought about that because it was grainy and it was, it was bad looking. And, and you were just going to immerse yourself in the moment instead. I mean, a- anyone who was taking content there or gathering content was doing like the disposable camera style. And most people just didn't do that. So I'm a believer stadiums were louder back then because people were not focused on anything other than making noise. And now a lot of folks let the other folks make noise and they're worried about capturing it. And that's why I have many reasons why I don't watch pro wrestling anymore, but that's one of them. I can't stand looking at that. I know that's, it makes me sound 75 years old. That's okay. I'm right about this. So I don't mind how, I don't mind how old it makes me sound if I'm right about something. Age is a social construct anyway. It's not even real. That's why I don't celebrate birthdays. So Urban Meyer was talking about that, and it made me think about a theme we've talked about on the show before. College football games and environments were at their best pre-advanced cell phone. Sporting events, concerts, entertainment events in front of large audiences were at their best in the pre-advanced cell phone era. And this, this, this time, like 07, mid-2000s, early 2000s, and then, of course, the late 2000s, Those are the last times that you're going to be able to go back and watch footage of an era where when something big happens, you didn't just have a sea of cell phones up in the air. You may have had flash bolts, but most people weren't holding the camera. Vince Young sprinting to the the far right corner in the Rose Bowl against Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush and that Trojan team in 05 to win the game. You got some flash bulbs, but you got eyeballs locked on the game. No one's got their cell phone in the air. Uh, Hogan Rock, WrestleMania 18. Flash bulbs, otherwise everyone's got their eyeballs on the ring. Those are two that I always go back to because those are two really big events in my, my adolescence that I remember. But this, this time right here, 07, for many reasons, I think college football was peaking in the mid to late 2000s. That's just one of them. Uh, teams getting up after losing a title. It, it, it happens, and that, that happens after this year, but it was tough, man. Urban Meyer, he's like pulling the cord on a lawnmower that's out of gasoline. And he's wondering, how come this is not working? I pulled the same cord last year and we won a title. I'm pulling it this year. And, just, and you keep thinking you're eventually going to. Nope, not in 07. But when I was watching episode three of Swamp Kings, Bradley, the associate was in there with me. And they get like, later in episode three and there's b-roll of just a police car speeding down the road in Gainesville and Bradley said oh finally here we go that's what people have felt when they were watching this thing I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the spoiler alert thing I'm serious but you can't talk about Florida in the late 2000s without talking about critical amounts of legal issues and they, they sort of skirt around them in this thing I mean they, they acknowledge them but it's acknowledging from a distance it's like hey I hung out with a tiger today. Well, come to find out, I went to the zoo and looked at a tiger through plexiglass. Like, yeah, they acknowledge it, but do they really acknowledge it? Mm, I'll let you decide that when you watch it. But um, Urban Meyer talked about not kicking guys off the team. So I, he, he took a lot of criticism, rightfully so, for how big a disaster that program was behind the scenes. And he has taken criticism since then for a lot of things, both professionally and personally, that have played out in the public arena, and he should have. I'm not here to defend any of that. But when he said, after I kicked the kid off the team, and he ended up dead a year later, I decided I'm not kicking kids off the team anymore. Uh, That's how I'd run a program. I would not kick kids off the team. 
I'd have I'd have disciplinary measures and punishment related measures in place, and I may not put you on the field, and I may suspend you. I'm not kicking you off the team. Uh, Urban Meyer's like that. Saban is it, except for extreme examples. He's like that. I believe in that. So it would be very hypocritical of me to criticize him for that. Um, but it's been pretty entertaining. I get some of the criticism. Some of you wanted more. I will always remind you the the trade off. When you get Tebow and Brandon Spikes and you get Urban Meyer to sit down for this thing, when you get the university signing off, when you get the licensing you need, I told you what documentaries were about. They were about content and they were about cast and creative, really cast and creative. Who can you get to go on the record? Well, they got the big names on the record. The trade-off is where are they going to let you go? What kind of creative direction are you really going to be allowed to have? And so you're going to have to... You're going to have to enjoy some things from a distance in this one. I got episode four still to watch. I'm looking forward to it. 